This is our panel session on London Java community and how to change the world. Um, you'll be pleased to know this presentation isn't very slide heavy at all, and we want to try and get questions uh, in as soon as possible. Um, so we're just going to give a quick introduction on who we are, um, what the LJC JCP committee is, uh, adopt JSR and adopt OpenJDK, and then open up for questions. We'll also help to clear up some of the acronyms that are in this slide as well uh, over the course of this presentation. So who are we? Well, my name is James Goff, um, and I joined the London Java User Group after finishing university in 2007. Um, my story was I was pretty much a social member for two years, um, and occasionally attended the pub and, and things like that. Uh, and when we started with the JCP group, uh, that was when I, I got more practically involved and, and worked on Adopt JSR and Adopt Open JDK. Hi, uh, my name is Richard. Um, <clears throat> I was uh, having a chat with Jim at one of our uh, meetings in a, in a pub in London and uh, we were discussing some of the JCP issues and Jim suggested I should probably come along to um, a JCP committee meeting since we had a seat on the EC. Well, that's, a <clears throat> that's a pretty good idea um, and have been uh, more involved subsequently. Um, I was helping out on the Adopt JSR program on 310 um, and also on uh, Lambdas, where we've run a couple of hack days. Um, and, you know, just generally interested in getting more kind of feedback and evidence into the standards process. Hi, I'm Ben Evans. Um, I started getting properly involved with the uh, London Java community in 2009 after being pointed at them after I attended DevOx. And that's where I met Martin and started helping organize events. Uh, and then I think I was probably one of the people who was, um, yeah, running, running for the EC was probably partially my fault. Um, we basically, we, we'd, we'd made some quite vocal comments about, about you know, the need for fresh blood to be injected into the standards process, and people said to us, well, essentially, why don't you put your money where your mouth is? And so that was, that was kind of my fault. I'm Trisha G. <clears throat> my voice has been gone all week, um, so I hope this mic is on, which it wasn't on Sunday. Um, I joined the London Java user group uh, in 2008 because I was looking for a job and I figured the best way to look for a job is to just try and meet other people who do what, what I want to do and find out who's hiring. Um, and I basically got more and more involved in the LJC because I kept making the mistake of opening my mouth and having opinions. And um, it's my fault we had monthly pub nights, I think. I think that was my idea. Um, and yeah, so as I got more as I had more opinions about what, was going, what wasn't working so well in the London Java user group, then um, I got invited to do more organizational stuff up until the point where um, we joined the EC. And I, I actually nominated myself for that, I think, and just said, yeah, this is something I'm going to have a lot of opinions on. Um, and, and I do. Cool. So I'm going to hand you over to Ben to introduce, introduce us to what the JCP is. Okay, so um, how many people are actually members of a Java user group at present? Okay, that's interesting. I'd really be interested to find out why that's the case. Um, I've noticed that the, at, at this Java One, there are a lot of people who aren't actually involved in their, their user group. I mean, I realize America's a big place, and a lot of people may not have one which is that local to them. Um, but if, uh, you know, afterwards, if you'd like to come up and talk to me about where you are and, you know, if you're in a major city where you, where you don't attend your local jug, I'd be very interested to, um, to hear that. Um, and I guess that, that's because, you know, we, we basically, there, there seems to be no downside to being part of a, of a Java user group. Um, you know, Trish talks about getting jobs, um, you know, making friends, networking, you know, finding Drinking. out about what's, what's up there. Hmm? Drinking. Drinking. Um, what's out there in the technology space. So, you know, it, yeah, it, it's been a pretty much uniformly positive experience without any obvious downside apart from the time commitment, which is, you know, minimal. One evening a month, if that. So anyway, so yeah, I'd, I'd like to hear those those viewpoints. So if people aren't familiar with with Java user groups, how many people understand what the JCP is? Okay, a few people. Okay. Um, so the JC, the, the, the JCP is, it stands for the Java Community Process, and it's effectively the the, the 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 way that new Java standards are produced. Now I know that developers are often aren't that aware of or that interested in standards work. But it's absolutely essential for, for, for part of what we, of what we do. Um, innovation is, after all, the lifeblood of our industry. But without compatibility and strong um, standards, it's actually very hard for you to have transferable skills. 
I mean, yes, you can you can learn a you know a proprietary technology stack like Spring, um, and it feels weird to be talking about Spring in that way. But that's effectively what it's become. It's become a, a you know something which has no standard. Different versions behave radically differently, um, and there's there's nothing which which guarantees you know consistency of versions or, or backwards compatibility. Um, Whereas if you if you learn something like like you know, SQL for example you expect that, that okay there are still big differences in the implementation but broadly a, C, a SQL select statement is going to behave the same way across across implementations so standards are important um, unfortunately they're also not that interesting to a lot of developers um, except when the things actually come out you've got a finalized standard developers start using it oh and now they find all the problems with it. So whilst standards are important to developers, it's not necessarily something they think of getting involved with. So what the JCP does is it tries to, um, to make sure that community members, be they people that produce the technology, people that use the technology, developers, user groups, academics, the whole raft of people that are involved in the Java community have a way of getting involved in the standards process. Um, and that could be something as simple. And the, 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 the JCP has a, a, a few strange things about it because it, it, it combines um, but really two separate groups of standards. So the standards are called JSRs, Java Specification Requests, and they have a life cycle. Like any other standards body, standards are proposed, talked about, you know, draft versions of them, betas if you like, are produced of the, of, of the standard, then a reference implementation and a testing kit are produced, and then at each stage of the process, those, those standards are voted on. And who are they voted on by? Well, the executive committee. So the, the JCP executive committee, which collectively the London Java user group, we have a, we have a seat on. Um, we are responsible as the executive committee for voting on all of the, uh, all of the standards that come through. So the, having a seat on the EC is a very rare thing. So there are less than 30 um, organizations, you know, vendors. Um, there's us and so Java to represent the user community. Um, there are a few um, distinguished individuals, but mostly it's some of the major companies. And with less than with less than 30 seats, it's quite a responsibility. So just to give you some idea of the amount of, of work which goes on, um, I think in the last year, I think did, did Shah say we'd had we'd had 20 new standards be proposed? So that's 20 specifications which need to be read. You know, wherever possible, we try to make sure that we look at the testing kit as well, um, look at the implementations check to make sure that everything is happening in an open and transparent way. You know, we have to think about IP concerns. Um, we have to think about, you know, is this reference implementation, is it open source? Is it possible to imp implement the standard in an open source project? So there's, there's a lot of things to, which, which go on which are really about um, uh, IP management and um, the, the mechanics of standards and technical politics. And a, the, there's actually not that much in the way of t actual technical work which goes on. So it's kind of, not interesting to, to, to a lot of developers, but at the same time, you know, it's stuff which really needs to happen if we're actually gonna have standards which you guys can rely upon moving into the future, okay? So, so how do we do that? How do we make sure that, that, we, that we represent balance and represent um, individual developers in the best way we can? Um, well, we have a committee. So the LJC JCP committee um, is a group of, of about, I think, there's currently seven people, isn't there? There's, there's four of us and Martin. Uh, and two others. And really what we do is we try to sort of poll our user group as best we can, but we've got 3,000 people in our group, and so trying to, to get a representative sample of them is actually quite difficult. So there are really only two ways that you can approach that problem. Either you can turn it into government by referenda, and at every decision put it up for, you know, put up a poll. Um, that doesn't work very well because it means that certain, you know, if your sample sizes are small, people with extreme opinions skew the poll. Um, and, that, and also there are, there are other technical problems in, in that we sometimes have to deal with information which is not yet public and to talk about it confidentially. So that would mean that that, that approach wouldn't work for anything which was confidential. So instead we've taken the approach that, that we, we have a small committee which talks to a larger group of, of people within the LJC and then from that we talk, try to talk to as many people in the wider community as we can. You know, and, and, and we do our best. Um, we don't always get it right. Um, we always say to people, our doors are always open. There, there is always more work than we can do. So if people want to sh show up and help you know, and feel strongly about this and want to show up, show up and help us work on this stuff, that's great. Um, and generally speaking, instead of framing it in terms of turn up and do some work rather than turn up and you know, 
uh, you know, wield some sort of mystical power, it's, uh, it's actually much easier to, to, to weed out the trolls. So we, we haven't had any problems with that yet. Um, and so the, co the committee really just operates by rough consensus. Um, we get together every month or so, um, talk through any, any new issues which have come up, any new standards which have been proposed. Um, we reach a consensus position on that, sanity check it, make sure it's sensible, make sure we talk as much as possible to the community to make you know, the larger LGC community um, to make sure that, that people's views are broadly being represented and kind of take it from there. And touch wood, I don't think we've actually had any, com any serious complaints so far. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's really the committee and how it operates and hopefully I've also demystified the, the, the job community process a little bit. Um, if you're interested in any of the, the standard stuff, then, then do get in touch because we're always, always interested in hearing from ordinary developers who care about standards. Okay, so I'm going to hand over to Jim. Yeah. So I guess Ben, is, as well as talking about some of the non-technical stuff that we do, we also have done two initiatives which have been really hands-on and helped to impact JSRs. So I'm going to talk about this from the perspective of JSR 3.10, which is the new date time API, and how I got involved with that and kind of how we've outlined the Adopt JSR program. Jim, can you explain what a JSR is? Uh, yeah, it's a Java specification request. So I think as Ben described it, it's basically, um, before you can change the language, you have to submit a JSR, which will then go through the various processes before being accepted and then moved into the JDK. So the question is, how does the JSR start its life? Well, I think basically anybody can submit a JSR, is that, is that fair to say? I think you have to be a JCP member, but that's free for individuals anyway. Uh, yeah, so you, you basically you make a proposal, and then there's an, an initial vote by the executive committee, which says whether people are happy for, you got, for everyone to move forward, because if it's something which is just going to get instantly voted down at the end. There's basically no point in starting. So there's, um, but the barrier to entry at the beginning is pretty low. Um, and then you kind of go into a period where you're, you're basically, you, you just kind of work on the specification request. And then you can, have one, you can have one or more early draft reviews. So they're periods of time where you're obliged to be open to the public. Um, I, I, frankly, you know, the early draft review idea is a good idea because it does require people to say, is a version that people can try out and test. But some, some JSRs are just, you know, effectively an early draft review permanently if they're things which are done completely in the open and people can play around with. And then, to, and then once it hits the end, people basically have a big vote at the end to say whether they're happy to standardize the specification itself. And there's, the, you know, there's a whole bunch of rules there, you know, do you have a reference implementation? Is there some tests to ensure compatibility with the specification? Um, does, is, are there not any horrible legal issues which are outstanding? And um, hopefully we try and do some technical review as well so that the standards produced aren't just terrible. Um, but yes, that's the basic process. Um, it's probably also worth pointing out here that there are a number of different ways that people can contribute. So, so, so under the, 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 the current version of the process, something which was brought in um, just, just last year, um, everything is required to be done in an open, transparent way. So you, you, you cannot have a private mailing list for your, for your project. It must be an open mailing list. In the sense of open for people to, to, you know, to subscribe and read it. You don't have to have one which, where anyone can post to it, but ev everyone must be able to read it. Um, there are also th these different project roles. So the, the simplest way to get involved is just as someone who's contributing, reading the mailing list, and contributing a, you know, a few bits and pieces here and there. You know, maybe that you're trying out different versions of the, 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 the specification as it's developed. Um, the next level up is, is what's called a member of the, the expert group. And the expert group is the, the body which is responsible for delivering the standard. So once you've passed your initial vote to say, we're going to create this JSR, that creates uh, an expert group um, which is run by a spec lead. So the spec lead is the person who has really a lot um, of, of, of influence over the development of their particular standard. Um, they're also broadly responsible for um, collecting and managing the IP contributions. And that, that's, that's actually quite a, a, a complex topic. So the, the best way to get started is to, to, you know, to, to, to just look at some of the, the, the groups you're interested in. Um, hopefully they're ones which are producing code in, into the public um, view regularly. Try out some of the betas, start contributing on the mailing lists, and then 
when the time is right, you might um, you might get asked to become part of an expert group or to think that, you know this is something I really care about and I've got a lot of experience with, so I, I can um, I should just put myself forward. Okay. So I guess right at the beginning, um, I was in the same position. I had no idea what any of this stuff meant. Um, and as we joined as a, a Java user group, I went along to the first session and ch had a chat with Ben, Martin, Trish, just to see what was, what was going on. And JS Hopper 10 was something that struck me as being absolutely critical for Java 8, so I thought I'd get involved. So the first step in getting involved was I thought, well, maybe I'll just drum up some support to start with. Uh, so I did a lightning talk at our local jug. Um, and I actually met Stephen to go through some of the content and, and sort of reach out to him and say, hello, here's what we're doing and um, what our plans are. And as, as time went on, we kind of got more involved with the process. So Richard, I met at one of our sort of monthly meetup sessions and we, he was basically interested as well and came along. And from there, we actually, as well as just evangelizing, so going around doing lightning talks, we actually um, started helping with the design reviews for the actual JSR. Uh, I think the first step of this is always contact the spec lead. It's good. You can get a lot out of actually talking to people before you start. So that's always a definite starting point. The other things that we've done are things like running hack days, uh, which basically is get, get the code. Um, so there's a lot of, in terms of OpenJDK 8, there's binary builds that you can get. And just get people to come down and, and play around with the technology, uh, feedback to the spec leads, what's, what people think of the libraries, where are the problems. And that early feedback is also what helps drive, drive the standards forward. So Richard, would you like to introduce OpenJDK, adopt OpenJDK? Um, so adopt OpenJDK is a uh, kind of effectively a partner program that's being run to try and get jugs to be involved in the OpenJDK. Um, so that's the reference implementation for uh, the Java SE standard. Um, and it, so the things, <clears throat> the things that people have been doing, they've, they've been starting off with a fairly low barrier to entry, something that many developers can contribute to by just making small warnings, fixes, and bug fixes. Um, and there's been a, an ongoing program to build up infrastructure around giving people an, an easy to use virtual machine that they can play around with. and. You know, it's, it's, it can be quite a pain in the neck to build the thing if you're not running Linux. Um, and the, the, you know, the, overall, the overall goal of Adopt OpenJDK is to try and get more participation into working on the reference implementation in the same way that Adopt JSR is about getting more people involved in working on the standards process. Um, and I think there's, there's also an element of evangelism to adopt OpenJDK about encouraging participation in the wider community and getting more people to use it. Uh, but yeah, and I think, but, but primarily it's about broadening the contributions. Um, one point which probably should be, should be made um, is that when people think about um, new versions of Java coming out and new standards, those are, developers sometimes think about those as being just one thing. Um, most JSRs which are run do not end up being part of the Java SE build which ships. Most of the time when you're talking about developing standards, you're talking about something like the servlet spec or um, something which defines a library you know, like Juice or, or, or the new version of Spring, for example, the, the dependency injection JSR. That, that, that's not going to go into the core and it never will. Um, so that's what I mean about the, the, the JCP having, having this, sort of, this sort of dual role because we have what are called the platform JSRs which are the standards for Java SE 7, Java SE 8, EE, you know, all of the, all of the, you know, the core platforms that are, that are defined. Um, but those are not the rule, they are the exception. The majority of JSRs which are done describe the way that a library on top of the, of, of the, um, the SE implementation is supposed to work. So I know that's a bit confusing, um, and if we were redesigning the process from scratch right now, we probably wouldn't do it that way. Um, but that, I know that that's a point of, of confusion often. So, so OpenJDK is the open source project, the code's all under the, the, the GPL, um, which defines the reference implementation for, um, for, for Java SE. But the actual, you know, the specification which describes how, how SE must behave um, is, is, is covered under a JSR. So I know that's a bit confusing. <laughs> Cool. So at this point, I'd like to open up for any questions on 
any of the material that we've been covering or anything else. <laughs> Cecilia. Uh, so uh, uh, in London, I get the feeling that people are quite dense. Uh, <laughs> That's not very nice. <laughs> yes, it's a centralized year population. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, do, and it's quite maybe that do you think that's part of your success I think in terms of the, the user group itself, I think it definitely helps. I mean, we are geographically located. London is extremely heavy on Java developers. I mean, um, all the banks use Java, and we've got a lot of banks in London. So there are a lot of Java developers close together, and it's very easy to get them all together. So we've got nearly 3,000 members, and we get easily, you know, 80 to 100 people turn up to any one event without a lot of effort. And not the same 80 or 100 people. It depends on which subjects we're covering. So do you have any advice for uh, other countries or cities that are where people are not so dense? I think one of the things we'd like to get better at, because we don't need to because we're quite dense, is um, things like using parlays to um, video our sessions and get people involved um, online through that sort of thing, using webinars, using... Twitter to, you know, uh, feedback questions from outside of the room. We haven't needed to do that sort of thing, but there's definitely, there's lots of mechanisms for that sort of thing. Um, so I was going to say as well, uh, since, you know, all JSRs now have an open mailing, or well, moving forward have an open mailing list, it's pretty easy for people who are perhaps in a small area regionally, and maybe they've only got, maybe they've only got a few people who locally can contribute to kind of get involved with other people working on things in other parts of the world, communicate, mention things on the joke leaders list, you know, well, there's all sorts of things that you can do to try and get in touch with other adopter JSR groups in other countries, in other areas, and to uh, collaborate on these kind of things. Because it's, it's, it's a lot easier, I would say, to get critical mass when you're, when you're working globally than if you're working in some small town somewhere. I just want to do a quick straw poll of the audience. Um, so can you put your hand up if you live in a city of more than, let's say, a million people? Okay, so a lot of people are, are actually living in, in, in smaller, um, smaller cities. Okay, so that, 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 that's interesting. Um, you know, we, we, we have, as Trish says, typically been bad at the telepresence stuff, um, but what we, what we have noticed is that it's now it's getting better and better. Um, so I was actually presenting um, last week at the Silicon Valley Java user group, Java FX user group even, um, and they, they actually had a, a relatively sophisticated live streaming solution, which you know is, is, is certainly not out with the, the, the realms of possibility, and it was just pretty standard consumer and prosumer kit, um, and they were actually able to, to live stream and basically double the size of their audience, you know, just by, by having a you know a, a channel up on Ustream. Um, you know, I, I know that that, that I mean, Martin, you've done quite a lot with working with Google Hangouts for some of your open source projects as well. Um, really, I think you know, one, one, of the, one of the things you can do is just to, 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 to start thinking about what itches you want to scratch. I mean, that's, that's always the way to get involved with community development or, or social coding. Um, it's, you have to care about the, you know, the individual project. Um, and starting, starting a Java user group, if there's only 10 Java developers in your town, well, you know, unless you get on and know who they all are, it, it may not be viable. Um, but on the other hand, if you if you um, find some project which is, is is run by a larger Java user group, quite often, you know, I'm sure they'll you know, they'd, they'd be interested in having the right contributors. And that's a good way to get involved. But I think there's ways we can learn off other user groups as well. So mm. if you're in a smaller town and there aren't that many Java developers, there are developers doing other things as well, and we can learn quite a lot from the other languages. Was someone saying that some of the standards came from were borrowed from .NET? We there were some. Who was talking about that? <clears throat> if you don't, so one of the disadvantages of being in, in London is you only speak to Java developers it, and the other JVM languages. You don't get ch a chance to learn off other, other types of languages and other types of communities, which I think is a good thing. So if you're in a smaller area, you can use a, a broader interest in tech to bring each other together and learn off each other. 
the only thing I was going to add to that was that basically what is a Java user group? It's just two or more people. So there's no reason why you can't just have a Java user group where you're interested in lambdas, for example, um, and you can pick up the materials from some of the bigger jugs and, and reuse that maybe in your workplace. Is that the group in Rotterdam? No, it's a different one. All right. It's an old one. We have several ways. So, does, does, does Duchess count as a job use group as well? Yes. How of course, rude. Of course it does. No, I'm, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I, that was badly phrased. Um, what, I, what I meant was, is that how you guys define yourself? I did, yes. OK. So, of course, Duchess is not geographic. So there are Java user groups which are not purely defined by their geography. So Duchess is the one for, for, for women in Java. Um, there are a few others as well, aren't there, which, are, which aren't geographic. I think there's some uh, more topic-oriented Yeah. And I think officially in the rules it says everybody has five users, we don't have two members. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's an interesting point, actually. I, there's a couple of the, was it one of the Open JDK, one of the Lambda's hack days, where we had a few people come along who didn't use Java in their day-to-day -day development job at all. Um, there was a guy who, for a while, was using Java, and then moved to working for a Ruby-based startup, who was playing around, who, who was quite interested in the in the Lambda side of things, because he felt it was something which Java was historically weak on. Um, there's also quite a few people who just kind of uh, pop along. I mean, in, in London, because we have a reasonable number of universities, you will get a few students just pop along, and they're just kind of happy to learn or just interested to learn something new altogether. Um, I, I think contributions like that are really good, where they're, especially from people who are, don't have a necessary technology-specific background. Cool. Any other questions? So I think we'll go to our slide of pre-canned questions <laughs> for, for the pre-10 pre o'clock. Uh, so some of these I think we've already answered, but uh, ben, maybe you could talk to how we make our voting decisions. Okay, so, so voting decisions are, are made by, um, I think I said some of this, but the, the, it's, it's, it's difficult to know how to represent you know, a, a community of, of 3,000 people. So the, the answer <coughs> is you just keep talking to people and you do, you do the best you can. Um, and if you make mistakes, you publicly acknowledge them and try not to make them again. Um, so that's that's... That's how we how, how we do it. Um, so we have regular pub meetings every every month for the whole L LJC. So we, as many as possible of us try to turn up to those meetings, try to talk to people. You know, we post to the mailing list about you know the, the minutes of our meetings, decisions that were taken. We invite comment. You know, we're always looking for additional volunteers and additional people to help out um, because the holding of an ECC and actually trying to do justice to the amount of of, of standards that are coming through is actually quite difficult. So I, I think I once estimated it that it was, it was about 15 hours work a week. I mean, and between a, a committee of seven, that's manageable because that's just a couple of hours each. Um, but it, it, you know, if you were a small user group holding an ECC, I could see how that would, that would quickly you know, mount up. Um, so, and, and then basically, we, we, you know, we talk to as many people as we can. You know, anything which, which appears to be of, of broad interest to, the, to our overall mailing list, we'll, we'll post out the mailing list and say, hey, what do people think about this? Um, and then from that, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of try to synthesize some sort of sense of what the community's feeling is, um, talk about it when we get together on a, on a monthly basis, or for certain critical issues, we may actually um, talk about it privately on our mailing list. Um, I think there's only ever been a couple of things that we've needed to talk about you know, very urgently without waiting for the next meeting. Um, and then from that, once consensus is, is achieved, that's, that's the position of the group. Um, and it's, it's kind of a cabinet principle that once we've, once we've made our decision, that's the decision and everybody, everybody supports that. If there's, if there's a dissenting view, I think people are, are all grown up and professional enough to, to not let that leak outside of the discussions of the committee. I'd like to ask a question. Okay. <clears throat> what did you guys expect to get out of this session? Anyone? Anyone? I wanted to know a bit more about what you guys 
as a user group or just as a user group generally? Okay. I'm based on never ended up on the side now. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> One more user. Success. <laughs> Have we covered enough of that? I mean, I can go into a, a lot more detail about what we do as a user group, if you want. If you have time, I'll just do a quick couple yeah. of minutes. Um, huh? <laughs> Drinking, <Yeah>. coding. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> we have we have events like at, at least weekly, if not sometimes two or three events in one week. Um, I think we didn't used to. We used to have a couple of a couple of months. As as we got bigger and as we got more people who have their their different interests, we actually have a number of different leaders of the London Java user group. So the people here are the people involved in the JCP committee stuff. But we've got loads of other members who aren't on the JCP committee, but they do other stuff inside the community. Um, so we we run various events, various things which are uh, more formal presentations, uh, bigger presentations. We used to have a lot of vendors come and talk to us, which is a good way to kickstart your jug because um, vendors always want to come and talk to, to developers. But as we got bigger, what we really wanted to do is get developers talking about what they do and, and it's more engaging than having a vendor come and sell at you. So <clears throat> we... Um, we used to have a couple of uh, quite a lot of vendors. Now we have a lot of developers coming in telling their war stories of something they've worked on that's cool or that's difficult or that you shouldn't use. Um, we do still have people coming along and telling us about cool technologies as well from outside of the jug. Um, at those events, we usually have, if we can, a two or three lightning talks beforehand. And that's how we try and grow some of the speakers from inside the jug. Because, and that's how most of us started, right? We first started with a 15 minute lightning talk. My first 15 five minutes. minute, oh, sorry, five, seven minutes. Seven minute lightning talk on, um, I did a seven minute lightning talk on the JCP committee. That was my first talk. Um, and then that way you get used to the idea of speaking in public and then um, we can grow talent from within the user group. We also have monthly pub meet, which is, I didn't always want to come to all the presentations because I don't need to learn about this particular technology. I'm not, I'm not using it. I'm not, I'm not going to remember any of this stuff if I'm not using it. I just wanted to come and meet people. So we have our monthly pub meeting, what's that, last Tuesday of the month, first Tuesday of the month? Something like that. And we try and make it nice and central because London's a difficult place to get around. And if we have it um, in Shoreditch, where a lot of the, the training events are, it's, I'm in West London, it's too difficult to get to that. So it's usually central. Um, and we have, what else do we have? Well, um, Hack sure. days. Sorry? I was going to say the code share. Code share, hack days. So people have some topic, uh, someone bring where there's a, you have to implement a solution to things. People bring along their alternatives and discuss um, and kind of review, collaborate, kind of generally learn about what the different options and thought processes were. Um, there's hack days we've been running on standards. Um, there's the JCP committee itself. Um, well, not only that, but there's also the um, well, basically, early on, we decided that, that um, the community was there for developers and for developers to, to, to you know, improve their careers. And um, so what that means is that individual groups sort of start off as special interest groups within the, the, the LJC. But then very quickly, if that's popular, they find that they actually kind of take on a life of their own. So we have this sort of principle of the, the LJC being kind of like a mothership and that there are a bunch of other smaller communities which are connected to it. You know, so for example, our Scala community started that way. Our Clojure community started that way. But as they grew in size, they sort of moved out from underneath us and, and so we retain a relationship with them. But they're, and they're still kind of part of the overall LJC diaspora, but they're, they're no longer you know, purely a subgroup of the LJC. So because of that, it's, it's kind of quite difficult to get a handle on how much stuff we're actually, we're actually doing at any given time because when a group gets large enough, they, they become effectively autonomous. Um, and we have this, this principle that, that, that anybody can, can come with, they've got a good idea for, for an event, you know, it's probably going to run. Um, but to the, to the point about vendors though, we now have very, very strict rules about how we, how we deal with vendors. Um, the amount of value that we can bring to a vendor you know, is, is very high. You know, they want access to developers. We, have, you know, we know a large and high quality um, group of, of, of developers and that, that represents a significant asset. So if they're going to get access to that, it's on our terms. And that means, you know, no hard sell, no sales pitches, you know, no thinking that they can, you know, they can 
get access to our databases and, or anything like that, which vendors and marketing people sometimes want to. They have to send us technologists. You know, early on, you know, you may have got a product evangelist or you know somebody from marketing. Um, a, a technical evangelist would be fine, but they would actually have to know their stuff. If they if they sent us, you know, just some product drone, our developers will just leave. And it, you know, it, it's bad for their brand. It's bad for our brand. It's no good for the people that actually turned up and you know, gave their time to come and listen. So, yeah, there's there's a bunch of stuff. Uh, there's the open conference every year. So once a year we run we run. I think Jim was going to talk about the open conference. You want to talk about the open conference. <laughs> Jim, why don't you talk about the open conference? <laughs> No, I was just going to say, um, because the open conference is a really interesting thing from my perspective, but I'll just let, let people know what it is. So an open conference is the idea where we just get 90 to, I think, 150 uh, Java developers together on a Saturday, and at the beginning of the day, we define the content for the day. So there is no real structure. There's, some, there's usually a keynote to kick stuff off, but after that, it's all our members presenting things that they found interesting from either of the conferences or just things that they've been working at their place of employment. So it's, it's a really good way to just collectively get people to participate. The other great thing that I've seen from this as well is, for example, Ben and Martin's relationship and how that began at an, uh, the session after the unconference where effectively they were very much sort of talking about the things we are now, like how there's a gap between people that come out of university with they know, they know about Java, they know how to code a little bit, but they don't, they, there's something about taking that next step. And together, they wrote a book about it, which was released at the, towards the beginning of the year. So, th so that was purely from attending a Java user group, and that's one of the things that you can get out of that. Um, and I guess since the book, you guys have also formed a company together. Yeah, so, so that's, that, that's really what, what we want to do with the OJC, is to provide an environment where things like that can happen where you know, people can, can actually find people who are going to be you know, important to them professionally and you know, hopefully, you know. Oh yeah, and personally, well. I met my boyfriend through the LJC. <laughs> <laughs> cool, has that inspired any further questions from the audience? No. Okay. <laughs> Next can question? Next can question is for Richard, actually. Oh dear. Hey, Richard. <laughs> How do I run a hack day? How do you run a hack day? That's a good question. Um, so specifically on the, on the, on the JSR front, um, we have been running a few hack days, which uh, we've been getting surprisingly good feedback from um, expert group members. Uh, one of the, uh, <laughs> an expert group spec lead uh, the other day said it helped keep him sane, so that's always a good thing to hear. Um, you basically you kind of want to start off pick a topic a focus some something that you can focus around so AJSR could be good the open JDK itself could be good but if you're gonna pick something as broad as the open JDK you probably want to target something at a, a niche within that so running a, a warnings day or a bugathon or something that tries to fix a specific problem a specific area once you've done that you're gonna need some kind of venue um, so we'll, in London we're quite lucky to get to get available venues but you'll probably find that if you ask around someone will have a free space that's available or maybe a company who um, are happy to lend you uh, one of their rooms for an evening or a Saturday as, lo as long as you uh, say thank you very much to them especially if they're trying to recruit developers um, once you've got a space and a topic uh, you need to try and it's, it's best to try and uh, contact whoever's actually in charge of the specification or whoever's working on the area inside um, the technology vendors such as Oracle to try and see if they have any particular area they want you to look at um, and to try and communicate and say hey you know maybe you're going to get some patches back from the end of this or maybe I'm about to send some feedback to your mailing list in a day's time just give you a heads up um, then you need to promote your event because you know uh, a hack day with no attendees is not very helpful. Um, and I mean, we've just been using our standard kind of, you know, jug mailing list where we have quite a few people signed up, usual promotional stuff. Uh, but you know, uh, social media is great for this kind of thing. Uh, you might find that if, if, you've, if you've got enough followers and if uh, you have the right hashtag, you'll get a few people who just wouldn't turn up to other things coming along to, coming along to an event like that. Um, on the day, it's always um, 
good to have perhaps a quick introductory presentation just to tell people why they're there, what the topic is, but not necessarily last for ages, but you know, something that just gets people into the, in, into the, into the feel of things, gives them a chance to finish off drinking their coffee and wake up. Um, and then it's also quite good when you're running the thing to have uh, kind of people who are helping out. So if you're, so the, 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 the hack days which we've run on kind of lambdas, we were running, we had probably five attendees to one person who was kind of just around to help them and make sure that if they got confused or stuck, they weren't gonna kind of go bored and go home, that they could, they, they could have someone to ask questions to who knew a little bit more about what was going on. Um, you don't necessarily need to know that much in order to be a kind of helper. Uh, Martin will testify to this. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, but, but, you, but you do need to know a little bit. Um, and then what, once, you, once you've run it, it's always good to try and kind of summarize what you've learned, perhaps have a quick chat to the attendees whilst it's going along or at the end, and then try and send, hopefully try and send feedback somewhere like a, a spec mailing list, or maybe if it's, if it's an open JDK bugathon type thing, try and send patches to the right open JDK mailing list. But if you're doing that, make sure that you've told the people that you're going to send the patches first so they don't accidentally have a huge diff and then be very, very worried about what to do with it. So I'm going to pick on Martin again, um, <laughs> if he will stop typing for a second. Would you mind coming up here and explaining about going global? Because we've discussed Adopt JSR and Adopt Open JDK, and I guess they kicked off in the London Java community, but one of our efforts has really been to push those to other user groups and make them available for other parts of the world. So as you're the expert, welcome. He was trying to get some work done. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, expert, yeah, not, not, not quite. It's something we're still learning about and working on a great deal. Um, I guess our strategy initially was to contact the other jug leaders on the international uh, leaders list. And Oracle also holds uh, yearly a uh, leaders of user groups conference uh, once a year for the global and also once a year for EMEA and Asia Pacific and, and other areas. So. Uh, this, the idea was to meet other jug leaders face to face, explain the idea of what we were trying to do, and then give them some basic materials on, on kicking off their own uh, efforts, and then just following up with them with some regular Skype calls and things. Um, so that's been reasonably successful to date, um, especially well organized jugs like So Java in Brazil. If you've seen Bruno running around with his Brazilian flag, he has an incredible team of, of very passionate evangelical type type people in his leadership team, so um, they, they've certainly started off their own efforts. Uh, we are trying to push it further though because we found that it has stalled a little bit as of last year in terms of spreading it out internationally, so I think it was mentioned before, but the idea of having either live streaming uh, workshops and talks as well as the ability for people to uh, download actual materials, coding materials, workshop materials, so they can just literally have a workshop in a box. Uh, is, is probably the next thing we need to do because it, it is really, really hard for other smaller user groups or user groups that don't have English as a first language to actually pick up on your ideas and run with them. So, um, yeah, that's where we're going to try and go next, basically. Uh, the, the point about um, non-English uh, speaking user groups is actually a, a, an interesting one because, I mean, there are some, some very large um, groups who, who don't have English as a first language. I mean, the, the Brazilians, for example, um, have you know, some crazy number like 30,000 Java developers in their user group. Um, and of those, only a, well, probably, maybe 10% um, speak English well enough to, to cope with, with materials. So what we found is that you have to kind of find a group of, of them, well, if, if you're English speaking to start with, you have to find a group who, who share a common language with you and then use those guys as a bridgehead to actually bridge into the, the sort of hinterland of people that, that, that only speak the, the, um, the, the native language. Um, the, the French user groups are an interesting case in point um, because they, the, the, the francophone um, tend to not be too keen about, about doing stuff in English. Um, there, there are exceptions, of course. Um, but the, they are you know, a very large user population. They have a, they have a great many jugs. Um, and they actually have kind of, kind of a good network of, of smaller jugs that all talk to each other within France. Um, so you know, it's a it's a great potential market for, for, for doing some of the more global efforts, 
but you just have to figure out how to how to approach it and how to get in and, and get that get the message across to people. But London's quite a good place to start that though because um, I read a stat which says that it's the city with the most languages spoken in it in the world. Yeah. So we could find people inside our own community which can provide some of those bridgeheads as well. Any, any questions? <laughs> no? Okay, I'm, I'm now going to wing some more questions. Um, I guess if each of us could answer over the last year what we think we've got, what, what the, I guess the highlight has been about being in the JCP group. Start with Trish. Oh, a JCP group or the LJC and JCP? Oh, I'm going to do the LJC as well. Um, the last year... Well, actually, that's a very good question. Um, my first Java one was last year, and I came here uh, to pick up a Duke's Choice Award, actually. And I've, I, um, Pen and Martin dragged me along to every single JCP meeting that they were invited to, to every single Jug Leaders meeting that they could get me into. Um, and my, uh, my boss at the time, he dragged me to a bunch of other things as well. This was a really great event to meet people, and I met a lot of people. I met um, Regina and, and the Duchess ladies. Um, I met all, loads of the Oracle folks. And, um, and sort of through that, and I also did my first presentation. I co-presented with someone else. And since then, I've, uh, I've done, I've, I've, gone to a bunch of conferences and done a bunch of presentations, which I wouldn't have been able to do if I hadn't done my first lightning talk at the LJC. Um, I, had a, I met a huge number of interesting people, which I wouldn't have been able to do without having been at Java One and met the JCP guys and met the Jug guys. Um, and it hasn't really necessarily changed the course of my career yet, um, but it's just, it's just been an amazing journey and I've just, I've learned so much in the last year and I can see now so many more op options open to me personally and professionally. It, it's, and it's only been 12 months, it's been incredible. Um, so I, th that's purely through my involvement of being in the LJC and our connection to the JCP. You'll notice how Trish didn't list meeting her boyfriend at her <laughs> I met him two that's years ago. Good thing ago. This is being recorded. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I met him before the last year. I just got together with him in the last 12 months. <laughs> nice catch, Trish. Ben. <laughs> um, God, uh, the last year. Okay, well, the last year has been off the chart in pretty much every way that I can think of, so I'm... I'm um, probably starting a company with a bunch of guys I met from, from the LJC. I mean, that, I think that probably that has to be it. What about your book? Oh, well, getting my book published with somebody <laughs> that I met through the LJC. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know. It's available in the bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not, I'm not really sure what a, what a good highlight is, but you know, uh, the LJC did end up winning two awards at this conference, so that's probably a, a, good, a good thing to pick on. Um, yeah, so I think I'll go with that. So I think for me, the, the biggest achievement this year has been actually feeling like I've made a difference. So contributions to JSR 310 and actually helping to keep, I guess, that roughly on course um, and even this week, there's more meetings about that to make sure that that ha actually happens and goes into Java 8. We'll probably have a bigger impact there than people will ever realize, but it does give you a pretty good feeling to know that you've been directly involved with that. Um, and I think the, the main thing for me is um, I've met so many good friends. I mean, I think Ben was one of the first people I told that I was going to have a child this next year. So, you know, the, the, we we're all pretty good good friends from the whole thing, and I think you know that's that to me is that's why I go, that's why I come along. So before I tear up, <laughs> are there any other questions, or should we go get a coffee? <laughs> I think it's coffee time. It's great. Thanks, awesome. everyone. Thank you.